Hi everyone, welcome to this new video. In today's video, we're going to start working with MLflow SDK, specifically creating experiments. And the first method that we're, we're going to explore is mlflow.createExperiment. This method takes three parameters, name, artifact location, and tags. And only name is mandatory. The artifact location and tags are optional parameters. Now, the name is basically the experiment name, and it must be a unique string. If you provide a name of an experiment that already exists, MLflow will draw an exception. The artifact location is a location uh, to store run artifacts. So artifacts are things like files, images, um, CSP, PNG, those kind of files. And tags is basically additional metadata about the experiment. Let's get started by creating an experiment. So the first thing I'm going to do is to import MLflow and set the tracking right. So as you know, when we are using MLflow, we are tracking metadata, metrics, parameters, models, artifacts, etc. And we need to provide a location where MLflow will store all that data and metadata. And we can do that by using this method, MLflow.setTrackingUrite. In this case, I am setting the uh, the tracking server or the location for this uh, tracking server at the root level of this folder. So this is the, pro the the folder in which I am working. This is basically the repository MLflow for MLDEP. Um, let me run this cell to show you something. I am importing MLflow. I am importing this get project root uh, utility function just to get um, the path to this root folder. And now here, I am going to create experiment, right? I am using mlflow.create experiment. I am providing the experiment name and some tags. And here I am capturing the experiment ID in this variable. Now I'm going to run this cell. And you can see that a new folder was created here, ML runs. Now ML runs contains all the metadata that we are going to store within the experiments that we will be creating for this tutorial. So here we have two folders that stand out. This is identified with zero, and this is identified with another ID. And this ID matches the ID that we have here. So every folder here would be an experiment. Uh, zero, or this one that you can see here, corresponds to the default experiment. The default experiment is an experiment that MLflow uses when you don't specify one. Right, so let's say that you are logging matrix parameters and you haven't specified any experiment. Well, MLflow will use the default experiment to store that metadata. And here we have the experiment that we just created. We have um, meta.yaml in which we can see metadata about this uh, experiment, like for example, the name, the lifecycle stage, uh, artifact location, and so on. And the tags, right? We, because when we created this experiment, we provided some tags. So we have topic and version. So let's take a look at the interface um, to see how this experiment looks like. So I'm going to run poetry mlflow, poetry run mlflow UI. And I'm going to switch to the browser now. So here we have the MLflow um, UI. At the left side, you can see the experiments section. We can see the default experiment that we didn't create, but MLflow uses as a default location for runs that, let's say, you didn't specify an experiment. And then we have the experiment that we just created, creating experiments. Now let's go back to the notebook. Now, you might think that only creating the experiment is enough to start using the experiment. But in reality, creating the experiment is not the same as having an active experiment. To set an experiment as active experiment, you need to use this method, mlflow.setExperiment. As you can see here in the documentation, it says that set the given experiment as the active experiment. And you can specify that, sorry, you can use this method either specifying the name of the experiment or the ID of the experiment. And what happens if you don't specify or if you don't set the experiment as the active experiment? Well, let's take a look at that. 
Here, in this method, I am starting a new run. We are going to explore this function in a different video, but for now, just know that this method will create a new run. And as you know, a run um, should be within an experiment. So I run, I'm going to execute this, and I'm going to go to the UI to show you something. Now here, under creating experiment, I have nothing, right? There are no new runs here. But if I go to default, I have the run that I just created, right? So this means that in order to use an experiment, I have to set the experiment as the active experiment. If you are not specifying the ID in the login function, for example. So here I am doing that. I am going to set the experiment that I just created as the active experiment. And this method returns, returns an experiment object. Okay, now let's try to do the same thing. I'm going to start a new run in this cell and I'm going to go to the UI. So here, as you can see here, there is no new runs under default. But if I go to creating experiments, we can see a new run. Now, there is something else about mlflow.setExperiment method. If the name of the experiment that you are providing doesn't exist, this method will create a new experiment using that name um, as the name for the experiment. So if I run this cell, as you can see here, I added this word, right? And we know that this experiment doesn't exist. So I'm going to run this. And it says, experiment with name, this name does not exist creating a new experiment. So if I go to the interface, we can see that now there is a new experiment here, creating experiments new. Now we can also set experiment providing the experiment ID. But what happens if the experiment ID is wrong? Well, in that case, MLflow will throw an exception, right? So as you know, this method returns an experiment object, which means that I can access attribute of that object using the dot notation. For example, in this case, I want to access the experiment ID, right? I can use this notation. Now let's try to set um, the experiment providing a wrong experiment ID. For example, in this case, I am modifying the experiment ID of the previous experiment by adding, by adding this string. So let me run this. And we got an exception. It says, could not find experiment with ID, this ID, because it doesn't exist. So to summarize, you can use this method, mlflow.setExperiment, to set an experiment that you created using mlflow.createExperiment as the active experiment so that login functions can detect that experiment automatically. Or you can use this method to create a new experiment, right? La, just like we did here. In this case, the problem is that you cannot provide um, or specify metadata like tags or the artifact location. So that's all for this video. Thanks for watching it and see you next time.